Hey everybody, welcome, Omni Goblin here once again bringing you the latest in Uniwar action. <clears throat> I am so excited to present to you guys the Championship August 2016 Grand Finals. Now as always, before we get started, we are going to have a brief discussion talking a little bit about some of the upcoming things in Uniwar. And as promised, I have to showcase for you guys three brand new upcoming Sapien units. Now I only have the artwork, I do not have actual hard statistics on these units, but we will get a chance to talk a little bit about what they're supposed to do and what they look like, what we like about them, what we don't like about them. Anything that you guys might have to say about uh, how you feel on the new units. I know there's a lot of uh, heated discussion going on in the chat rooms right now. Here's your chance to make some discussion while we wait for some more people to catch up with us before we start the tournament. Uh, let's take a first quick look here now. Uh, I want to take a look at some of these Sapiens units. Actually, before we go into the Sapien units themselves, I do want to talk about the road-making system now. <clears throat> the way the road-making system has been set up, there's been some optimizations done on the road, uh, on the road matchups. Before, it, with the automated road link-up now, it's uh, it has been readjusted to make sure that it goes in the... Road adjustments and attachments are made at this order. Starting first, a road tile will always first connect with another road tile, then a road tile will connect with a bridge, then a road tile will connect with a base, then after that priority goes to an open plains, then I believe to a forest, then, or sorry, a city comes before plains, then plains, then forest, then mountain, and then swamp. So, uh, hey, you know what, Poland, El Kasser, Four Little War Games, how you guys doing? Jeremy Ray, I see a couple other people here. Just waiting for some other people to join in. Uh, if you guys have uh, anybody else who might not know, just let people know that the, the, the stream is starting. I want a bunch of people to be able to get a chance to see some of these uh, brand new units. With that said, let's go take a look at some of these uh, this new stuff. Uh, the first unit I want to unveil to you guys is called the Sapien Predator. <clears throat> it's the most complete artwork uh, on the units I've seen so far. I love the look of this unit, first personally. Uh, from what I've gathered about it, it's supposed to be an anti-air striker. It's supposed to give, uh, I, I believe that, I, we all know that the air, air sapiens can sometimes struggle against some air assault from Qualian. This is meant to help them deal with some Qualian issues on certain types of maps. Uh, I, once again, I don't have hard statistics, but I think it looks really cool. Can't wait to try it. It's supposed to be, for, once again, my, 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 uh, predictions for this is that it's going to be uh, like the other uh, new units we've seen, very easy to get killed, but has a lot of movement power and is specializes in anti-air. Hopefully, if we have another anti-air unit, that'll give us more incentive. I believe if we add another anti-air unit, you're definitely going to have to nerf the uh, anti the air attack on some of the new units that had just released yesterday. You know where Poland says a bomber when attacking a city is plus five to attack. I love that idea. That would be such a great way to meld it with the brand new units. A bomber, uh, like setting it up as a bomber attack would be a really, really cool way to set this unit up. All right, guys, and let's take a look at some of the other units here. Uh, now, this one isn't quite as finished with the artwork, but this is going to be the Sapiens Hovercraft. You can see there's a couple of different, uh, <coughs> there's a couple of different models that are on proposals on the drawing board right now. Personally, my favorite are the uh, robotic ones down like right, right here. I like these. I like having kind of a droid unit. I think this one is really cool. It reminds me of those hover bikes from Star Wars with maybe like an extra couple of engines on them. Now this, the Sapiens Hovercraft, I believe is going to be their amphibic unit, the unit that can go on both land and on sea tiles. Um, now these are gonna be very important units for certain types of maps. Uh, the, this is gonna make naval, this is, Probably the most important type of unit, if you ask me. I think amphibians are what we really, really need to see as this is what's going to allow us to use those reefs. If you recall, these amphibian units, instead of getting a negative two and a negative three to their pack defensive, uh, hovercrafts and amphibian units are actually going to get a bonus. I believe it's like, what, a plus two and plus three? Like they get a big, big bonus of sitting out onto the reef tiles. And this is going to make so much more effective naval combat. Like, I really don't, I'll have a lot more reasons to build a navy if I have smaller navy units to guard my large investments in the, in the Hydronauts and the Destroyers and the Leviathans. El Castro says he likes the top designs. What do you guys think, personally? Any, any preferences on any of these styles? 
The top ones look like more natural hovercrafts. I think the the middle row are my personal favorites. I think they look like uh, they look like more middle touristic style. But that's just a matter of preference. I think any one of these designs I'd probably be happy with, to be honest. And that brings us to our next unit now, guys. Oh, whoa. Wrong panel. <laughs> that's going to bring us to our next unit that I wanted to talk about. And this is going to be the Sapien Submarine. Uh, this unit I'm really looking forward to. I think the animation on it is going to be very cool. From what I can tell, is like I hope that the animation has it going in and out. What I'd really like to see from the submarine, personally, is two different modes. One mode where it's surface level and has more movement abilities, and then one mode where it's submerged and can do more damage. I think that would be a really, really cool way to set up the submarine. Clearly, these are going to be the more anti-aquatic units. Uh, yeah, I agree, Earth. Uh, the, the amphibious units were some of the most needed additions to the new units. I personally would have liked to see the amphibious units come out first before the tank blasters, just so that we could get straight into more aquatic battles. But, uh, I mean, I'm excited about the tank blasters, but honestly, this is the class of units that I am the most excited about, by far. Um, I, love the, I love the way the animation on the missile is supposed to look. Uh, I like this design number nine. Personally, I think it looks really cool, but uh, this is like the more classic, like, yellow submarine style. Uh, I'm really excited to see what these units can do. Like, uh, I, I really wish I had the stats for you guys today, but I think it's a little early. Hey, and Zavi is here. How you doing, Zavi? Great to see you with us. <laughs> that was fun in Field Commander Sub is when submerged lethal against destroyers. That's what I'm really hoping to see, uh, see Earth. That would be really, really cool. Um, and give this unit a lot of utility. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for us uh, on the... That's all the units that are new stuff that I really have to show you today. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about all the new units, though. Now, I know a lot of people have some passionate feelings about how these new units are supposed to look. Um... I wish I still had them in color after I purchased them so I could still take a look at them considering we can't get them yet. The, the Bopper, Guardian, and Borefly. Oh, so you did go with the Bopper. I didn't even notice that yet. I thought this was going to be called the Blaster. Uh, once again, the unit I'm most excited about playing with is going to be the Borefly. Uh, Z Zavi says, feel free to ask any questions. Other things are coming this week. More rewards and more ways to earn Unicorns. Very agreed, Zavi. Uh, speaking of which, guys, while we're having this discussion, I say... This is a perfect time to have our first lottery of the evening before we get started with the games. Looks like we got a couple more people joining us here. So now would be a good time. So, guys, the first uh, the first lottery today is going to be for 1,000 Unicorns. Should be just enough to get you started with all three of the new units. Uh, I'll be giving that away first, and then later on we'll be giving away some merchandise opportunities uh, in some of the later units. But first, if you guys want a chance to win 1,000 Unicorns, type in Garuda into the chat room now. I'll have my bot pack a random player, and then I will pay you those Unicorns once the cast is over. So I'll give you guys about two minutes to enter that in. Type in Garuda into the chat room now. We'll get the lot first lottery underway. So while we're talking about that, my personal feelings, I've, uh, if you guys look at the purchase history, I haven't really been playing ladder very much. I play like a couple ladder games at a time. I really don't play more than three or four because I'm very busy with other uh, stuff that I set up. And I've managed to earn a significant amount. If you look at this, like, I've just been playing in like 42, plus 46, plus 40. Over the couple of course of days, I've earned like half, I mean a little over half enough to buy one unit for a race that I want to try out with. And, uh, I mean, I have the units now, but, I mean, if I were in that circumstance, I feel like the, 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 I feel the dev team really has done a great job of if you really, really want to dig your heels in and say, I don't want to pay for these units. I totally understand that. That's, everybody has their own circumstances. But we really, I believe, we've been given enough opportunity. If you continue playing the game, two weeks to three weeks, you could have all the units. I think they were priced very reasonably. And I feel like if, like, so you what you can't have them for the first two weeks is that really good. play through the game. They are not going to immediately be in ranked games and tournament games, is from what I believe. Right now, from the get-go, they're going to be in custom games only. From what I've heard, Zavi, Zavi, correct me if I'm wrong, but are they going to be available for all the players during the tournament? Like, if, like let's say I'm a person who didn't purchase the units, but I enter the, the January tournament, would I be able to play with the new units still? 
That would be my question. And right now, they're not going to be right available in rank. You'll have an opportunity to grind out some of the units. Get them for one that you like and play around with that and trying to learn it. The balance changes are coming to them, guys. There's no way we're going to just leave the units to be unbalanced. That's why we're giving it... That's, that's what giving it the ability to just be in custom for a while is going to let us do. It's going to let us play test it. That's what these units need. They need some time for balancing, and that's just the natural progression of adding new content to a game. The new units will be available for free for everyone, but only in championship tournaments. Thank you, Zabi. So that clears up my turn. So if you, even, you will still get your opportunity to play through them. You're going to get a chance to try the new content, guys. You just need to have a little patience. And I don't think that's asking too much. All right. Anyways, now it's time for us to pick a winner. And our winner is going to be Gorthalin B. Congratulations, Gorthalin B. 1,000 unicorns to you, sir. Enjoy the new units. Gorthalin B is the winner. That's 1,000 coins to you, sir. Congratulations. Hey, guys. Those of you just joining us, thank you. We're about to get started here with the tournament in just a moment. Don't forget, guys, please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Always uh, helpful to my little channel here whenever you guys, you guys support. So, with that all said... Um, <clears throat> I want to get to the tournament now, guys. What say we get started? So, the August 2016 Championship Grand Finals, without any further ado, let's get into the games. Now, the last couple of series of games was one of the most exciting quarter, probably the most exciting quarterfinal I've ever witnessed or passed it. I was so in... There were so many artilleries. We saw, like, plays with three walkers at a time, three worms at a time. We saw plays where there were hydronauts coming out. And the hydronauts were getting destroyed. And we saw credit kills in, like, the tens of thousands. It was absolutely insane. And uh, now we're going to see some of the best players in the game duke it out for their opportunity to play past the semifinals and into the championship title. Let's get to the match. Hold on. I just want to... Get us there without accidentally doing the reveal. Zavi, if you're listening, we really need filters on the championship page. I want to talk to you about that later. If uh, if you find some extra time. Uh, so let's get on to our semifinal rounds. And our contestants are going to be Angry Horde Joe, Kikoho, A Needle, and Strahd. Now, last time we played on the ice map, uh, what was it called again? I forget the name. I'm just checking the name of the map here. The, the, the different road. This was a really interesting map that uh, matchup that we saw. It, it presented a lot of high credit opportunities. We're going to be playing on a very different map for the semifinal rounds here now, though. There's round three, round four, round six, round seven, and semifinals. There we go. All right, and our first matchup is going to be between Kikoho and Angry Hoda Joe. Kikoho taking an excellent win over Indiana Jones. Was it Indiana Jones that he played against? I forget which, which uh, player he played in that round. And then his component, Angry Horde Joe, taking an amazing uh, victory over Dugman, taking 20 wins over Dugman. It was Vogan Jeltz, by the way, that Kikoho went up against. Kikoho, once again, coming in at a score of 2304. Very talented player. He, he uh, uh, Vogan Jeltz, not a, a very good player on the team ladders. And Kikoho made very, sh uh, I'm not sure work of him, but I think Kikoho was in control of the situation the whole time during that series. And Angry Horde Joe in the same position and against a player like Dugman 4. And Ki Angry Horde Joe coming in at a score of 23.90. And Angry Horde Joe, both these players have punched up against some players that I think are a little above their league at times. And managed to not just play against them, but play against them quite handily at times. So I'm really interested to see which one of these players is going to be able to come out on top. And this map is going to be called Tinland. Uh, Tinland is a fun map. This is going to be a very base race heavy style map. You can see that there are two natural bases for collection and then two contested bases in the center on the northern and southern sides. Initial credit count of 200 and a credit per base score of 100. Uh, this is, and also keep in mind, there are ports in the back, so... And the water rings does go all the way around, so it is possible to see some more aquatic combat in this game. Now, this is going to be a Titan versus uh, Crawlian matchup. 
I think the Crawlians have a clear advantage on this map by virtue of having that extra movement points. Even with the teleport, this is a mid a small and mid-sized map, which is going to favor Crawlians in a base race every time. We'll have to just see how this works out. Let's get the game underway without any further ado, guys. Playing on the left-hand side as the blue safe as the blue titans. It is from France, Kiko. And his opponent playing on the right-hand side as the Red Crawlians. It will be Angry Horde Joe. Let's get the game underway. Kikoho going to start with the northern capture instead of the southern one. Guess, guess either direction this is going to make that big a deal. Opening with the Mecha. And now Kikoho going to jump directly to the center for looking to make maybe make a capture on the side or harass early. And now Angry Horde Joe finally pushing up for his first capture. With all that mobility he can afford. And it looks like with that speeder is going to chase off that underling and push it back to the... Back to its natural base capture, and now Kikoho going for a double capture on his round. And now Angry Horde Joe trying to take advantage of the situation, pushing that speeder forward onto the top, trying to claim some of this territory before those underlings can get to it. And now Kikoho going for an underling swarm transition. And now Kikoho going for that first capture, and Kikoho going to try and take the lead on the capture with a teleport, is going to push back some attacks from those underlings. And that speeder also going to put some aggression on those underlings as well. Angry Horde Joe in a position where it's going to be difficult to make the capture. And Angry Horde Joe going to have to retaliate against that speeder. Will the speeder go down this turn? And the speeder is going to get eliminated. Kikoho, sorry, Angry Horde Joe taking the 250 credit lead and pulling a chance at the capture to stay even with the base race. More underlings being pumped out from Kiko. Excuse me, underling and swarm coming out. That's swarm are going to give a little bit more firepower against this ground light heavy composition Kikoho has put out. Now Kikoho getting more tight, sorry, more mechas put out into the mix to try and combat some of this under, these uh, swarmers. Swarmers do not fare well against direct hits from uh, mechas, so that might be a good hand if he can get it to them. Now these swarmers are going to double team up against this mecha here. That mecha is going to easily go down, but does he have any underlings left to back up the capture with? A link it will not, and that base will remain uncaptured. Although Angry Horde Joe continuing his advantage to 450 over zero. Now Kikoho forced to put down the plasma to keep the base point secure, and that is going to deplete his resources. He does not have a lot to fight with. That plasma is going to remain a big anchor on him, but it will keep that position safe for now. And here comes Kikoho with his swarmers. Pushing on to a neg 8 onto that mecha and now trying to focus on the other mecha to try to reduce any firepower abilities that, Ang that Kikoho might have. Following up with the underling and bringing down Angry Horde, uh, Angry Horde Joe's mechas to a 2 and 3 health. With more swarmers on the way, it looks like that northern flank is starting to become very dangerous for Kikoho. Even more underlings being pumped out here. And now Kikoho going to have to try and reduce this underling count as quickly as he can. Bring the speeder out there onto the health tile, but retreating it back, not wanting to engage the entire force of swarmers and underlings. More mechas being pumped out to try and stop the flow. And now that plasma tank is pushing forward, but it's not going to be able to join the center battle where it really needs to be. Angry Horde Joe now taking shots. Down goes another mecha, winding up to 550 over 100. And it looks like that's going to be another mecha kill possibly here. Is that going to be a mecha kill? Not on the base, but on the force. And Angry Horde Joe taking a 650 over 100. Make that 750 over 100. The underling sweeping up. And now it's 850 over 100. And that is a big credit swing. Three mechas in one turn. And here comes the base capture. Double base capture threat. Not, no way that Kikoko can deflect some of these. Wow, very aggressive underling play from, Kik from Angry Horde Joe. Totally taking advantage of that extra mobility and this terrain heavy map. More plasma tanks coming from Kikoho, and plasma tanks will buy him some more rounds. Maybe he can extend it and try to get a win onto the second game from the series. Angry Horde Joe not letting off the throttle at all, continuing his assault. Still more swarmers in the back to attack with. That underling picking up another kill, and now it's 1.1 over 100. Angry Horde Joe in a decisively position here. And more swarmers ganging up onto that plasma tank, getting the neg one on it, reducing an out comes the pinzer to retaliate. And Angry Horde Joe now continuing to readjust his underlings. He's got two base captures off of Kikoho already hungrily eyeing the third base down at uh, hungry bleh, eyeing a third capture at that southern position. And here come these swarmers gonna take two shots against this plasma tank. That plasma tank might even go down this turn. Looks like the plasma tank isn't going to be able to survive. More swarmers saw from it. 
Is that Swarmer going to be able to make the final assault? No, it will not. And it looks like he's going to opt to go after that mecha in the back instead. Volgenjeltz, welcome. How are you? Volgenjeltz, Kikoho's opponent, guys, from game from uh, the quarterfinals. And there's the GG. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. That is not the GG. That is just Angry Horde Joe's <laughs> turn revolving. Ah. You get so into the game, you read little signs like that too easily. And here comes the Garuda onto this tank. Is the Garuda's with the Gengar going to be enough to eliminate it this round? The Swarmers should have pretty good availability on it. And with that neg to its defense, it looks like it might, might be enough. And down goes the base. And that's going to be a third capture from Angry Horde Joe on Kikoho's base, putting him at 1.6 over 300. And the second tank is going to go down this turn as well. That is a thousand credit turn. Wow, Angry Horde Joe putting himself at 2.1. And with another capture. Or is he going for the capture? Or is he just going to go for the mecha kill? And I think that might be the game, guys. I think that is it. And there is victory. Angry Horde Joe taking a 10-round victory over Kikoho. Wow. And that was a map that, that is just showing the power of that mobility on those underlings. That Swarmer-Underling combo, so deadly on a mountain and forest-heavy map like this against Speeder and Mecha combination. And I think things really started to deteriorate. If we go, where where was it that uh, I'm looking for? Here on round seven, you see the position that uh, I want to go back to where this where the tank was captured. Here's the position that Kikoho is in. He's already down at 450 over zero. This base is exposed. There's one, two, three, four, four on. Sorry, not four. This one, these two actually in the back. Are they able to capture this? Yes, they are. This one cannot. So there's three underlings that have the ability to capture this one base. And two swarmers to attack any light, light grounds or speeders that might come up on the position. So the only way to really keep that base safe... Uh, you can't put an Eclipse on it. You can't put a speeder on it. You can't put a mech on it. Any one of those is going to leave this base vulnerable. So the only way to respond is to go Plasma. Problem is, this Plasma is at such poor maneuverability. There's nowhere for it to go. You can't put it on these Swamp Tiles. You have to retreat it all the way back. It takes two turns just to retreat back to this base and get ready to protect this tile. It takes, you're, it's very easy to block, so this tank is just a big anchor waiting for, which opens up the entire north for Angry Horde Joe to take advantage of. So really, really well played game by Angry Horde Joe, taking a 10 round victory over Kikoho, and that will put us into game two of the series. And that is a, let's move on to the next game here. And now we're gonna have Kikoho switched around and we will have our players be able to have an opportunity. And now this is gonna be all about, I'm gonna get rid of this message real quick because it's the green glow starting to annoy me guys. There we go. And now, this is going to be about can Kikoho, Kikoho, wait, this is the same game. Ugh, darn it. My apologies. Wrong one. Let's do it. Here we go. This is the correct game. My apologies. So, this is going to be about can Kikoho, Kikoho keep up the pressure and take enough bases in enough time. He's gonna be forced to act very aggressively. He's only got 11 rounds in which to come up with a win here. All right, let's get the game started. Playing on the left-hand side as the Blue Titans, it will be Angry Horde Joe. And his opponent playing on the right-hand side as the Red Trollians, it will be Kikoho. Let's get the game underway. And now Angry Horde Joe, once again, going for a Northern capture here. And opening up with another mecha for that other capture. And Kikoho going for that same position. Positioning his underling at the place. Waiting for his speeders. And now Kikoho going to have to pull back. Very similar to the exact same uh, opening before. Where that speeder chases off that underling from the center. More underlings coming out. And now Angry Horde Joe moving to the south. Opting not to go for the capture right away. But putting pressure on that southern base. Forcing Kikoho to react quickly to that position and keeping that base contested. But there is the Swarmers to back that position up. And here comes Angry Joe with the capture attempt on the south. But that should be easily repelled by those two Swarmers and Unlink from Kikoho. And now Angry Horde Joe getting very bold with that speeder. Putting it up on the health tile to put pressure on those two Swarmers. And now that one Swarmer going to be forced to come all the way to the southern sea tiles to avoid getting knocked out by that speeder. And the other Swarmer very well positioned on the health tile so that speeder's attack will not be too big a factor. And another underling to 
block that speeder. Other underling at the south takes it. Very great move. Takes the uh, kill on the base. Very great move. And we have first blood Kikoho 100 over 0. Angry Horde Joe now opening out, moving out with his uh, two more speeders. Uh, another speed in the back, retreating his other speeder. More mechas coming out here and having to yield that position, but taking the capture at the north instead to try and keep the game even. And now Kikoho going to make shots at that, trying to soften up some of these units, softening up the speeder. Opting not to make the attack with the underling on the speeder just yet, just trying to reduce the speeder's attack tournament, the attack power next turn. And now lots of underling. We're going. We see very mass underling play coming out from Kikoho. Angry Horde Joe opting to come out with some eclipse to maybe help handle some of this swarmer speeder swarmer underlings combination. We see these speeders going to try and get an underling kill here with that speeder mecha combo at south. And now these mecha is going to try and take more hits. That mecha with the tree cover going to get a very nice 6-3 to three exchange on that underling. Here comes the swarmer to try and return fire. And these underlings are immediately going to try and reduce this eclipse health while it's stuck on that base with that neg 1 to its defense. Bringing it down to a 4 health. Can he bring it down even further? Getting it down to a neg 1. And now that Swarmer there might be even able to play clean up and down goes the Eclipse. And right, just like that, Kikoho taking 500 over 100. Big move from Kikoho. More Swarmers coming on the board for Kikoho as well. And here comes Angry Horde Joe. Try and respond with these mechas. Try to clean up some of these underlings as quickly as he can. That speeder going to dodge in and pick up a quick underling kill. Retreat it back to the health tile where it can quickly heal up. More retreats to the health tile from these uh, mechas. And another underling kill. And Angry Horde Joe actually taking it back to 400. Under 500. Not too bad. A return fire round. Mass mechas coming out to defend the points. And now this Swarmer. Going to take a four shot. The Swarmer Underling is going to be a very effective counter against Mass Mecha Speeder on this map. But unfortunately, Angry Horde Joe doesn't have the credit count. I th Tanks just work so poorly against his. I think he might need a few more speeders, but those Mechas are protecting a lot. But those Mecha. The Mechas are protecting a lot of positions, but they're getting deteriorated very quickly. However, we are on round seven. Kikoho only has four more rounds. As a, I'm sorry, I. Apparently, I thought the last round was uh, the last game was won in ten rounds, but it was apparently won in eleven rounds. I was corrected by the game itself. And here comes Angry Horde Joe repelling the capture attack attempt from Kikoho, keeping the score pretty even at five hundred to six hundred. I don't know if Kikoho is going to be able to take this game in only three rounds. More mecha build up from Angry Horde Joe. And these swarmers going to have to adjust once again. And with the underling going to take another mecha kill, but a mecha kill isn't enough right now. You need to start taking bases like a, a base needs to be taken this turn if Kikoho hopes any hope of winning the game within 11 rounds. And here comes the attempt. Is he going to be able to hold on to it? No, it looks like he's not even going to be able for the attempt. He has to go for more mecha kills before he can try to make the attempt on the base. More underlings here coming into this position that one mecha teleporting away to safety. And this line of mechas is going to continue advancing. The speeder combination going to come in and get more underling kills here. Angry Horde Joe making it very difficult for Kikoho to get a foothold in the position. And this swarm of mecha combination going to take another underling kill. And once again, Angry Horde Joe able to keep the credit skill credit kill at 100 under. And now Kikoho. Keeps hammering on that base position, but that base position continues to get replenished. The Swarmer's going for some hungry mecha kills, but can he make enough? And that Underling will be there to follow up. Kikoho once again pushing himself a little further, but he needs more than credit kill advantage at this point. He needs a base capture. Is he going to go for the attempt? No, it looks like he's going to go for the mecha kills instead. Underlings being pumped out as well. It's just a continual war of underlings versus mechas. There is an eclipse on the board. That eclipse will make it a lot harder for those swarmers to do their damage. It's also very effective against that light ground. Cleaning up some more underling kills. Angry Horde Joe keeping an even keel yet again for a fifth consecutive turn. Another underling kill, and Angry Horde Joe has pulled it once again at 100, 1,000 under 1.1. 1 .1. And here comes Kikoho to respond. Kikoho now going to try and focus fire down one of those speeders. Is he going to have enough fire for that? 
Using that, bringing that five health swarmer back onto the health tile. Out comes the underling approach. Are we going to see a base capture finally attempt here? Finally, we just might. No, it looks like he's going to have to go for the swarmer for the speeder kill instead. Another mecha kill, and that is a little bit more damage. If an award of attrition, this would be a big move, but you only have one turn left. Out comes the Leviathan, but it's going to be too little too late. The Eclipse going to take out that underling right here, and then another underling kill. And the Angry Horde Joe can afford this because he only needs to survive this round, and I think that's going to be it, guys. I don't think he co-hosts. Co uh, this is round 11, so it looks like Kikoho is not going to be able to manage. Let's see if Kikoho is... How long is he going to play out till? Not sure. Leviathan now going to move in. Try and free up that position. Kikoho was just not able to get a capture at that northern base. Not able to find the space he needed to protect it in the front guard so that those mechas couldn't come there and blast away any underlings remaining on the base trying to make a capture. Here comes capture in the back here. More underlings being pumped out in the midline in the front, but the underlings, once again... This is still round 11. And now with round 12, that's officially going to eliminate Kikoho. I would like to see how the match finishes out here, though. Those of you just joining us, uh, we just watched the previous matchup between Kikoho and Angry Horde Joe. Angry Horde Joe taking an 11-round win. And so Kikoho, this being the second game on the 12th round, will be eliminated. But I would, once again, I do want to see how the game plays out. And these swarmers, man, those swarmers cannot free up that position. The Leviathan, is the Leviathan going to be enough to make a difference? It will get a nice swarm, a speeder kill here. Kikoho finally starting to take, uh, widen up that credit count faster than Angry Horde Joe can replenish his, uh, his kill amount. And now we're going to see finally the base capture attempt comes down. After five attempts to get up to that position and failing... At last, we're going to see a base capture attempt go through. And now here comes Kiko, Here comes Angry Horde Joe with the Repel. Does he have the forces to make the attempt Repel? He does with the Eclipse and Mecha, and that base is going to be freed up once again. Although that will focus fire away from some of these underlings in the center, which are very dangerous. Here come the speeders. One more time, going to make a shot at this base capture. I'd like, I just want to see this base get actually captured at this point. It's been so many attempts. Uh, very nice shot against the Eclipse from the Leviathan. And now Kikoho opting to go for a kill instead of the base capture once again. And up comes the Pinzer onto the Swamp Tile to deal with some of these mechas encroaching on the southern position. Underling's going to chip away and finally get another mecha kill. And now Kikoho taking an 1100 credit advantage. Here comes Swarmers. Even more of them. <laughs> and that speeder going to take a six shot. And it looks like that Underling will be easily repelled away from the base. Angry Horde Joe going to open up that position, put another mecha down on it. Mecha, Mass Mecha was a fantastic strategy for Angry Horde Joe to go with on a game, on, on this round. It really, it's not, a, if, if this was just a, I, if this was a regular ranked game, it wouldn't be a good strategy. In fact, you'd want to go how Kikoho tried to play it, uh, where Kikoho tried to go for early gains and almost was successful. But Angry Horde Joe was able to outmaneuver him with those that extra underling movement. And Angry Horde Joe went for... I understand that I'll lose in a war of attrition. Look, he's, he's already starting... Every time he loses a little bit more foothold on that position. But he was able to extend the rounds so many times. Uh, he's just, we're at round 14 and Kikoho has still not been able to take a base away. Um, if, if we continue to play this game, yes, eventually that base is going to be snatched up. But... Uh, Angry Horde Joe has made it where there's just no way for you to do it in the number of rounds that you needed to get it done. I'm going to increase the time on this just a little bit, guys, because I want to get into the next rounds here. And there is a Swarmer kill for Angry Horde Joe, and we do see a Hydronaut here to, to counter against that Leviathan. 
More speeders and on Mechas. And then another base capture attempt. That pins are now in the center. Swarm are getting a neg three shot against it. That Mecha is down. Second Mecha down. Are we going to get a third Mecha in this as well? That's going to be a big move for Kikoho. Finally springing up the space. And this is what I was saying. In a war of attrition, this, the Kralian player is always going to win on this map. Assuming you know what you're doing. The problem is that you can... How do I set up that attrition to take the most turns possible? And that is the strategy Angry Horde Joe has put through. And that is why he is going to be moving on into the grand final match. Here comes the next attempt capture from Angry Horde Joe. And finally that base has been captured. Double capture attempt on this round. And it looks like Kikoho finally finding the footing he needed to make the win. But far too late on round 17 now. I wonder, can he push this to 18 rounds? Possibly. More kills. <laughs> Trying to capture a base with a one health underling. That is so funny. I love that. <laughs> and now that's that uh, assimilator in the middle. Not going to stand a chance. Is he going to be able to get a kill on the Hydronaut? That should end the game right here and right now. And there's the victory finally on round 17. And so we have our final result, guys. Our final result, Kikoho taking an 18-round victory, but Angry Horde Joe in the end taking his 11-round victory, and it looks like we have our first finalist of the evening, and it will be Angry Horde Joe. Congratulations, guys. So it's time for us to do another lottery. We have 30 people watching. Thank you for joining us, guys. Um, today, we're going to do a lottery now for some a chance to win some Uniwar merchandise. Once again, guys, uh, unfortunately, we're only able to ship, ship uh, prizes for Uniwar merchandise out to our uh, USA viewers at the moment. Uh, shipping costs are too prohibitive. So if you do win the lottery for the merchandise and you don't live in America, we will, I will send you a compensation in Unicoins instead. All right, guys. So if you want to enter the lottery, type in underling into the chat room now, guys. And I'll give you about two minutes on that lottery. So once again, if you want a chance to win a Uniwar beanie or a Uniwar t-shirt, enter underling into the chat room now. Uh, I really enjoyed that matchup. A little bit... Uh, I really think it was... Uh, it, I think Kikoho went into the mindset of, I'm going to play this game like I would play a random ranked game. Uh, which is, I'm going to play it to win. Right? Which is totally unreasonable, and I think, but I, I think Angry Horde Joe kind of went in more with the mentality of, I'm going to play this like a tournament game, and play to lose, but to lose in as many rounds as possible. And that is the attitude, that that is the strategy that got him to this final roundup. Once again, what do you guys think? Uh, I'm still really excited to see uh, our next com competition. And after, we this, after this lottery is over, guys, we're going to get a chance to see none other... Then Needle versus Strahd, going to be a big matchup coming up here in just a second, guys. This is going to be one of the, definitely one of the highlights of the tournament. Two of the best, best players in the game going heads to heads on a very tricky map, no less. Uh, we'll, all, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm going to give you guys about another minute on this lottery. Once again, if you want a chance to win a Uniward t-shirt or a Uniward Bernini, Type in Underling into the chat room now. All right, guys. And uh, while we're waiting, I'm going to just get us uh, set up to the next game. Round seven, round, what is this? Round four, round five, round six, round seven, and round eight. Okay. This is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a much, very, very different game coming up from what we saw before, even though it's on the same map, because this will be a Sapiens versus Titans matchup. And um, that really changes the dynamic. I would expect to see some Engineer EMP heavy play and possibly some Plasma tanks to make push. I do expect to see some Plasmas. Definitely expect to see Marine helicopters as a possibility we might even see if we get far into the, if they manage to get far enough to the late game we could even see some hydronauts and destroyers go head to head all sorts of possibilities on a map like this really anything that could happen 
super, super, super excited about this matchup. Before we get started and talking about our players, let's make our first select, let's make our, let's select our second uh, lottery winner of the day. And our winner is gonna be the Sequel. The Sequel, congratulations. I will send you a PM about that after the cast, my friend. All right, guys. Thanks very much. There will be one more opportunity to win merchandise after the before the final uh, matchup of the evening, guys. But before we get there, let's talk a little bit about our players. All right, and so these these are like, like I said before, they're not players who need very much introduction. Both of these guys are some of the best players of the game. Needle, highest rated German player, taking three number one, th taking three gold in various tournaments. Taking a second place and a, and a bronze in his career. Spring coming in at a score of 25.85. Which is, let me tell you, that is not an easy score. And of course his opponent, none other than Strahd. Strahd coming in at a score of 26.08. You really can't find two more evenly matched up players. So I'm fascinated to see who's going to come out on top. Literally anything could happen when you have two guys like this going up against each other. Really can't wait to see how it's going to work out. Let's get this game underway. Playing on the left-hand side as the Blue Sapiens from Germany. It will be Needle. And his opponent playing on the right-hand side as the Red Titans. Hailing from the UK, it will be Strahd. Let's get this game underway. And Needle is going to be taking first turn. Going once again for that northern capture with his marine. Mecha making the northern capture as well. No need for as much haste. You're not going up against underlings, so the base race is a lot more even. And now Needle op uh, opting to move that marine down to the south to try and get the... Trying to make the capture on that southern position. Strahd opting to go for the natural capture first and back it up with a speeder. And here comes Needle pushing that Marine up, trying to trying to make threaten, threaten captures on both positions and out with the Marauder to, to attack it. And now Strahd going for, uh, Needle going for double capture. And here comes Strahd. Strahd's going to have to try and push those speeders up to block out that Marauder-Marine combination. And now Needle just continue to encroach upon that position, getting the... And getting the Engineer in the back to support with that EMP. Those speeders had better watch their distance. And now these speeders will take the Marine kill. And the Marine kill will be prevent Needle from being able to make that capture onto the north. And here comes the capture attempt from Strahd. Strahd also moving his mecha to the south to put some pressure on that base in the south. Maybe divert away some of those Marauders. And now Needle forced to push back his Engineer. And these Marauders will take a kill up at the top and repel that first attack. Retreating that 9 health to the healing tile. And out comes the tank on that point to present it. Great move from Strahd. But that tank, once again, will it act as an anchor later into the game? And now Strahd is going to push these speeders in and try. Is he going to be able to get... Does that speeder reach? Nope. That Marauder will not get a kill. But it will be reduced to 2 health. And teleporting in some more mechas to threaten to capture up onto that position. Strahd really try, needs to make that capture soon, too. If he's going to keep on an even footing. But right now, he does have the advantage. I'd say in unit weight, he has the advantage. But that tank is going to push forward and not sit idly on the base this time. More Marauders coming out from Strahd Needle. Now Strahd getting aggressive again with those speeders trying to defend that position and not let those Marines and Marauders get through that speeder line so that the capture can occur. Is he going to be able to make a Marine kill here? Marine kill for Strahd. That's actually a pretty big kill. Once again prevents Needle from being able to threaten a capture at the north right away. Delaying any capture turns, attempts for another turn at minimum. And that teleported unit up at the top is now stabilized once again. It will be able to make the capture next turn. Here comes Needle now. He's got to break open the speeder line if he wants to keep that base from being unoccupied and keep his advantage. And that Engineer is going to push up there, threatening the EMP and giving great healing abilities to these Marauders. And that 10 health Marauder should be just enough. And is that speeder going to be able to get eliminated? No, it looks like it's going to have to... Wait as Needle is going to be forced to make the heal and get that Marauder on the trees where it has the negative defense to a 10 health so that it is not eliminated. And now Strahd finally able to push that unit up and make another capture attempt. Will it stick though? Is Needle has a lot of Marauders there. It will be very difficult to hold on to. And now Strahd getting very big heals on the center. 
great advantages to Strahd controlling the center. And that's that's the one thing that Needle is missing here is he's sacrificing a lot of center control so that uh, Strahd, he can take northern control. Here come these speeders now. I'm oh, sorry, these marauders. Marine trying to get a three shot, reduce that speeder health. Double engineers coming out now. Engineer getting pushed very close to those speeders and mechas. But here come the here come the full health marauders getting a nice mecha kill right there. And now this marauders are gonna go for the kill, and the kill does go down in the base attack. Base capture once again repelled. Here come the mean the marines trying to put some major pressure now on Strahd. Strahd starting to look like he's in a little bit of trouble here. That tank is very aggressive positioning for it. Although those mechas will get a nice little marine kill. But Strahd is still in a deficit here. He needs to make a kill soon. He needs to make more kills. Is he going to be able to get another marine kill here? Just enough to make that kill. And he caps the base position. And suddenly that base position is vulnerable. And it looks like Strahd done a very good job of responding to that tank aggression. Credit kill. It has been even to 400 to 400. Now these Marauders are going to have to dart south again to deal with that base cap. Is that Marine going to be able to get down that speeder with the one shot? No, it is not enough. That speeder is going to have to take at least another shot from a Marine or a Marauder. And here comes the Marauder Force Attack from that Swap Tile. Although the base position is freed up. Now these Marauders getting very nice insta-heals from that double Engineer combo. Still have great control of the northern position from Needle. And these Marines threatening some base capture possibilities on the next turns. And now the sport beaters from Strahd are going to attack that swamp position from that Marauder. And that Marauder is not going to be very long. Is it going to be going able to go down this turn? These three health speeders, I don't know if that would be enough to make the kill. And it is a kill. And then Strahd is able to put himself back to 650, under 750. Another Marine kill will even him up. More control of the center with those Swarmers. And another base capture attempt from Strahd on that northern position. The third one of the match so far. Speeders coming out from Strahd as well. Strahd just continuing with this mecha speeder combination. Now Needle making the kill at the bottom here. Is he going to be able to repel the attack? I think he has plenty of spire power to do it. So it looks like that attack, that, that base capture is not going to be able to hold. More speeder kills from Needle. Putting him at 1.2 over 650. Needle doubling up on the kill count. And it looks like we might even have another speeder kill here. That would be a very big swing. Down goes the base capture, once again repelled, and the speeder kill to go along with it. And now Needle decisively at a thousand credit kill advantage, 1.6 over 650. And now Needle is just going with a double, uh, another double and Marine to Marauder, which is exactly what he needs. The Marauder for the extra firepower and the Marines to make the captures. And now Strahd is going to have to try and take his retaliation. Does he enough? To, does he have enough firepower to make the Marauder kills that he desperately needs to make right now? He needs like two Marauder kills to stay competitive right now. Can he do it? It looks like he doesn't have the firepower and opting to go for Mass Mecha to try and brace himself against the impact. Now here comes Needle with more speeder kills, putting him at 1.8 over 750. Bringing that one health Marauder to the healing tile where it will easily be healed up with those Engineers. More and more speeder kills from Needle and putting him at 2.0 over to 750. Retake it finally now. Here comes the Marine making the capture, and it looks like Needle will take that position and guard it very ably with that Marauder. Don't think that uh, Strahd has what it has the forces necessary to repel that attack. And that capture should be able to go down next turn. Very nice heals coming on that Marauder in the back. And here comes more pushes from Marines. More Marauders being pumped out from Needle just to make sure that his position is solidified. This mech line is going to have to try and retreat, at least try to surround the tank so that it's not able to get into a, an effective attack position. At least not as an effective attack position. And now Needle making his big assault onto the back line. These Marauders are going to clean up. That Marine Marauder combination is going to clean up this line of mechas very, very quickly, especially with those mountain tiles on the advantage. Down goes another mecha. That's two this turn. We're going to see more mecha kills. I'm almost certain of it. 
Now there's full health. Marauder coming from the back to make another mecha kill. Putting Needle at 2.3 over 750. More mecha kills coming from Needle now. 2.4 over 750. Are we going to see any more here? I think the positioning has got it just where he might not be able to. And he's going to retreat that 5 health to the healing tile. Put that engineer right up behind the defensive line. Be able to make big heals and attack on the next round. And these, these bases in a lot of trouble. And even more engineers and marauders coming up from Neil now. And now Strahd trying to return fire. How many rounds can he extend the game to? We are on round 12. That's a marauder kill, but too little too late. You need at least, at this point, like forget two marauder kills. You need three marauder kills. And a tank kill addition wouldn't hurt. And there's just not the forces. The real question is, how, I mean, just how many times... Can Strahd play this knock my pins down and I rebuild the pins act? I don't know if he's got it. I think uh, Needle might be able to make at least a cap here. And with the Engineer, he's going to make a conversion on that Mecha. Mecha conversion going to be huge here. Can he take it this turn? Or will Strahd be able to push it to round 14? These Mecha lines are disintegrating so quickly. Another Mecha kill. And I think that might just be it. All bases and units accounted for. And there's the victory from Needle. Oh, wait, no, but the port is not pep. Can the, but I think the Marauder can reach that port. And there it is. And I think that's going to be the victory, folks. <laughs> Doesn't stop him from building a few Marauders and Marines. And using every... That's the mark of a professional, everybody. You use every move you have. And there's the victory. Con great game. Needle taking a 13-round overstrad. Um... Needle really did a great job with, uh, like, I thought building that tank was going to be a mistake, but he put it to very good use. The use of his engineers was absolutely critical to his gameplay. It made it so difficult for uh, Strahd to get Marauder kills. The Marauders clearly showing to be an extremely powerful muse, uh, extremely powerful unit on this matchup. And, uh... I think Needle also did a really good job of... Uh, I was concerned that Strahd was going to... I was concerned for, on Needle's account that Strahd was going to be able to extend it to a round 14, giving himself a lot of leeway. He's got 13 rounds to take the next matchup, which he could certainly do, so this is far from over. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we'll, we'll just have to see. I mean, I fully believe that Strahd is capable of taking an, an SVT matchup on this game, on this map as Sapiens in under 13 rounds. That's absolutely feasible so we will just have to move on and see our first matchup of this series needle taking a 13 round victory over stride and now we will move into game two and see can strud make his attack in less than 13 we will just have to watch and see but without any further ado let's get the game underway playing on the left hand side as the blue sapiens it is from the uk strud and his opponent playing on the right-hand side as the Red Titans from Germany. It is Needle. Let's get the game underway. Now Strahd going for the standard opening. No reason to do it. No reason to get any fan with any kind of weird fancy cheese openings with that Marine. Just kicking normal capture. Same thing from Needle here. Conventional openings from both players. It looks like a Strahd is going to go for the natural capture instead of trying to extend this position outwards first. And Needle, seeing that Strahd has made that decision, will follow suit with the mirrored opening. Not, excuse me, not a mirrored opening, but instead going for the Mecha Speeder opening. And here comes the Marauders from Strahd. That Speeder going to go cap that base at the south and make sure that Marine is not able to get to the position just yet. But that Speeder may be a little bit vulnerable to some big damage attacks. And here comes the first capture attempt from Strahd at the northern position with the Marauders with the Marauder as the blocker. More Marines and Marauders coming out from Strahd. Happy to, content to let Needle tape on to keep the cap on that position for now. And here comes the push from these Mechas. Will they be able to get the Marauder kill early on? Early Marauder kill for Needle. And that is going to make it difficult for Strahd, even with the base capture early. 
strides a, you know, a Marau an early Marauder capture is difficult to get over, especially with this many speeders on the board. But here comes a second base capture attempt from Strahd, and a second base capture would mean a big deal. It would make it extremely difficult for Needle to get back into the game, even with the advantage. But it looks like these speeders are going to be just enough to repel the attack here. Taking a big six shot against that Marine on the top, and that Marine on the mountain tile will go down, and Needle now extending his, ex his advantage to 350 over 100, and another Marine kill from that remaining speeder push him at 450 over 100, and now Strahd still with the base advantage, but under 300 credits. Is, it's, it's a dead even game right now. Now here comes Strahd. He's making a second attempt at that Southern capture. These speeders are not as healthy as they were last round. They should be able to make the repel, but at a cost of a lot of health. Here comes that seven health speeder to try and make that that last kill on this. And Sneedle doing a really, really good job of extending his his, uh, his credit kill. The, the more he can extend his credit kill, even if he's at a base disadvantage, the more he can extend the rounds of the game. And that's what Sneedle is going to be interested in doing. And now Strahd trying to get a speeder kill to try and get his credit kill back into the game. Is the speeder going to go down here? It's at a two health and it is eliminated. And Strahd putting himself at 450 under 650, starting to catch up. And with that only 200 under, you might start seeing the effects of an extra 100 credits per turn really starting to kick in. Here comes more Marines and, and Marauders. Now it's a heated contested, heated contested battle for that southern base. Another Marauder kill from Needle, extending him once again to 900 over 450. And here comes the capture attempt from Needle on that base. Will Strahd be able to repel it? And now he's going to go up against some of these speeders. Will he be able to pick up a speeder kill hill? He really does need one to stay competitive with the credit kill count. And that 8 health Marauder is just enough to do the job. And the speeder kill is down. Strahd once again only under by 200. Is he going to make this propel here though? That's the real question. That Marauder brings it down to a 2 health. And with a full health Marine just able to reach. Down goes the capture attempt. Once again repelled by Strahd. Doing an excellent job. And now Strahd actually going for the capture instead. Ho ho ho. Reflect an attack and then make one of your own. I love it. Now Needle. Has to retreat back and try to continue to make Marauder kills. He's still keeping the credit kill advantage, but not quite as high as it was before. I spoke too soon. Double Marauder kill. And now suddenly Needle taking a 500 credit turn. is going to put himself at 1.4 over 800. This game is not over. And once again, the attack capture is repelled. And the base is freed up and contested one more time. Here comes Strahd now, not interested in capturing the base, but instead trying to put pressure on that mecha at the bottom. Now is Strahd going to be able to get a kill on this center speeder here? That would be big. And with that 10 health on those swamp tiles, it might just be enough. Bring it to 1 health, and with the 6 health marine, that should be just enough to do the job. Another speeder kill for Strahd, and now Strahd starting to push himself away. He's still under by 500 credits, but every round he's managed to, like, no, that's not true. Actually, I'd say that like Needle has done an amazing job of keeping himself well in the advantage the whole game. Is he going to be able to make this capture here, though? That's what I really want to know. He's got enough speeders to make an effective wall. Picking up another Marine kill. I like that. Instead of going for the capture, Needle opts to continue to extend his lead. Smart decision. That 700 credit, credit advantage you have right now is what's going to keep him competitive and able to extend the game past round 13. We are on round 10 here. And now Strahd forced to pull a retreat on that Marine instead of push forward for some more capture attempts. Now Sneedle just repositioning his mechas, trying to recycle his units. How many rounds can I extend it? He only has to extend it for two more. He's got a lot of speeders on the board that need to be eliminated first. Here come the Marauders here, going to make a kill on that one Marauder, on that one Mecha, but a Mecha kill is not enough. Needs a base capture if he wants to stay in this game, or in this series, I should say. Now Strahd positioning his, mech, his Marauders in the center, and out comes the tank at the top. 
Needle going to dash in with these full health speeders and pick up another Marauder kill. There it is. And is he going to be able to get another kill here? No, it won't be a kill, I don't think. Wait, it just might be. Can that other speeder reach the position it can? And that is going to be a second Marauder kill. And now Needle at 2.2 over 1.1. Oh, man. And here comes Strahd now. Going to take a speeder kill. Getting a four health shot at that mecha. Freeing up that base position, but he needs to capture very badly. Going for double heal on that Marauder in the center. And now Strahd, we are in round 12, everyone. One more round before we have a winner. And Needle, is he going to get another Marauder kill here in the center? Yet another Marauder kill. And these speeders are doing an amazing job of, of keeping the game in balance for Needle. Putting up a nice shield of mechas against that tank at the top so that tank cannot come and encroach on that base position. Now Strahd now is going to send that Marauder to the center and try and pick up a speeder kill hill. Can he get it? To a negative one. And with the full health marine might just be enough. A speeder kill is not enough though. Need more. He needs like two or three here. He really needs to eliminate at least three speeders this round. Which he doesn't have the firepower for I think. Out comes an engineer at that position to try and heal up those marauders just really quickly. Interesting engineer spot. And here comes this wall of speeders from Needle to try and do more damage against these marine line. Picking up a nice kill right there. And can that 7 health reach that 2 health marine in the back as well? Down goes another marauder. And now Needle at 2.9 over 1.7. And it can reach there. And now Needle going to take yet another kill and put him at 3.0 over 1.7. Wow. Stride going for the early base capture, but having to sacrifice from his material. And Needle just never giving Strahd the opportunity to recatch his footing in terms of unit weight, even with the extra base capture. And now Strahd making a push with that Engineer Tank Marauder line at the northern eastern point. But will it be enough? We are on round 14, by the way, guys. So it looks like that is going to be all she wrote for Strahd's uh, attempt through this uh, tournament. But I do want to see how the game finishes out. Kill from these speeders at that point once again. Another Marauder kill from these speeders. The tank will be left alone, but it doesn't really have any place to go at this point. More Marauder kills from the Needle. Getting some heals on that Veteran Speeder in the center. And now here comes the capture attempt from Needle. And this is going to put the game... And now Needle in the winning position. Only advantage the Strahd had was that one extra base per turn. And without that, without that advantage, there's no way that Strahd is going to be able to catch up here. Although he has capped the base and made a capture on a mecha with that engineer. That is a very strong position. <clears throat> is Needle going to be able to repel against it? <laughs> Every time I say there's no way, they find a way, I swear. <laughs> Strahd going heavy with the Marin. There's the GG. Strahd, Needle taking a 15-round victory over Strahd. Well, uh, yeah, I, I think Needle would have taken this game eventually. And just, oh, it looks like a Needle ended up GG because he knew he won. I'm sorry. Doesn't really matter. End result is that we do have a new champ, or do have a new finalist. It will be Needle. Needle taking a 13-round win over Strahd, and that will be enough to put him into the final matchup. And it looks like we have our two final contestants, everyone. Awesome.
awesome matchup. Uh, Needle did a really, really good job of recognizing when he couldn't take the base away, the base capture away, and instead seeing if you're going to take a base capture, I'm going to take material. And he managed to snowball that material victory even at a deficit of a base per turn. And his control with those speeders is what won in the game. Those speeders got so many Marauder kills within the framework of the time of that game. It's absolutely mind-boggling how many kills they got. And it just managed to skyrocket him into the lead for the whole time. All right, guys. So that is going to be uh, that is going to put us into the that is going to put us towards our grand final matchup series. Before we get there, guys, let's do our last lottery giveaway of the day. If you want an opportunity to win a Uniwar T-shirt or beanie, type in Marines into the chat room now. That's Marines plural with an S at the end. Remember, guys, our hats and the, the beanie hats and the t-shirt merchandise can only be shipped out to our American viewers. If you win and you, if you are an international viewer and you win the lottery, we will instead compensate you with unicorns. Pinky promise. Give you guys about a minute for that. While we're waiting for that, who's got predictions on Angry Horde Joe versus Needle? What do you guys feel? <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Plasma. <laughs> Once again, guys, if you're just joining us or rejoining us, uh, if you want an opportunity to win a Uniwar beanie or t-shirt, type Marines into the chat room now. And guys, don't forget, if you enjoy the video, please, please, please consider hitting the like or subscribe button. Always helps my channel out. Helps us get the word out about Uniwar so that we can continue making great content for you guys to enjoy. All right, guys, I'm going to give you about another 30 seconds here. One last time, if you want an opportunity to win a Uniward t-shirt or beanies, type in Marines into the chat room now. <laughs> All right. Just about ready to get started here. All right, I'm going to pick a winner here now, guys. And our winner is Obi Ben Kenobi. Congratulations. Congratulations, Obi Ben. <laughs> like the name. Uh, I'm actually taking my girl to go see the new Star Wars movie this weekend. Cannot wait. All right. I was bitterly disappointed by the last one, but I'm just going to walk into it like nothing happened and pretend that I love Star Wars still, which I do. I can't wait to see it. Congratulations, Obi Ben. Red Five, so you got a whole. St oh, oh, Red Five, how you doing? Red Five, everybody. One of the definitely one of the best team players in the game. You were rated at uh, number one on the dual ladder for a while, I believe. Congratulations, Red Five, or should I say Obi Ben? Keep up the Star Wars names. Absolutely love it. And with that, everybody, let's move into our grand final series. Going on to our final round between Angry Horde Joe and Needle. And before we get started, let's just take a look at the map itself. This map is going to be Small Cold War Version 1. A very small map. Small matchup with... Uh, what are those stats on here? 150 credits per base. With Sorry, 100 credits per base with an initial credit count of 150. That will give each player an opportunity to gain 300 credits per round once all naturals have been captured. Looking at the base itself, this is going to be a Kralian Kralian matchup. So the terrain isn't. I mean, the terrain itself might not come into his play, heavily into play on, especially on a small map. But because by virtue, look, there's only one, two, three, four, five spaces between each base. That means that one swarmer at any either of these positions can immediately have access to this entire back line here. So because of the close proximity, expect first strike to be of critical importance here. Managing your kills and your ability to rotate your units is going to be deter who determines what gets the win. Early, ga early gains in this matchup is going to be absolutely critical. 
Um, once again, I don't think we need to introduce, introduce our players. We've had a chance to look at them play throughout this tournament. Angry Horde Joe versus Needle. Um, once again, I think Needle is the favorite player just by his just by virtue of his his resume to come into this match. He is about 200 uh, ELO rated higher than Angry Horde Joe. But Angry Horde Joe has once again. He's the kind of player who's shown I can do whatever it takes to win. He knows how to think tactically, both in a per game and per series relationship or uh, situational relationship. And I think he can apply that strategic thinking to a game. So he might surprise you. And if there's a match where you're going to take, if there's any kind of matchup where you're going to out, where you're going to outperform someone who's typically plays above your standard level, KVK is the matchup to make that happen. Instantly increases your odds of doing better. So. We'll see. We'll just have to wait and see. And with that, let's, with that said, let's get the name. Let's get this game underway. Playing on the southern side as the Black and Green Crawlians. It will be Angry Horde Joe. And his opponent playing on the top side as the Red and Gold Crawlian. It will be Needle. Let's get the game underway. And Angry Horde Joe will be taking the round one. Turn, will be taking turn one. Making his natural capture on the front instead of the back first. Both players taking the point base first. Very wise decision. And the Angry Horde Joe, oh, sorry, Needle opting to go for Underling for that other capture. And now Angry Horde Joe opting to go for another Underling as well to make the capture. And out comes the first Garuda from Needle. And now Angry Horde Joe opting to go for the Swarmer and save up for a 200 credits on the next turn. And now that Garuda is going to move in very quickly first and try to get free shots on that Underling. And this Swarmer is going to take two against that Garuda. Is it going to be enough? Another Garuda up on the board here to counter. And now this Garuda. Is this Garuda going to be able to get a kill with that Swarmer with the gang up? Plus three. Going to bring it down to a two health. Very dangerous. And with the Garuda on the top here. Now Angry Horde Joe in a lot of trouble. He's got to make a kill here. Does he have it though? I don't think he has a kill. Forced to bring up another Underling as a blocker. Heals the other Underling here. Now that Swarmer in here. Going to be able to get some free shots against these Garudas. Garuda from the back, able to take advantage of the close proximity, take a five shot against that Garuda, and now Angry Horde Joe in a lot of trouble. His air support very badly weakened, and it looks like Angry Horde Joe forced to sacrifice a Garuda and able to get a plus two to his gang up. Will it be enough for the kill here with the plus two on the other end? Now Angry Horde Joe able to keep it at 350, but to 350, but he's only got a two health Garuda to respond to that plus eight health at the back here, and now that Swarm is going to be able to take a kill, and Needle putting himself at 700 over 350, and that is going to spell big trouble for Angry Horde Joe, and down goes the other Swarmer, and now Needle taking the decisive first strike here, will be able to put himself at a very, very big lead on a KVK small map matchup. And there's the GG in only seven rounds. That was one of the fastest final tournament games ever. Needle did an amazing job of like, if you look here, Needle comes in aggressive right away. Big advantage to him being the second turn player. Able to get to the underling right away. And this Garuda comes up too late to respond. My question, now would it have possibly been better to go for the Garuda in the back here? No, because then you would have eliminated, then the Swarmer could have gotten eliminated immediately that turn. Basically, Angry Horde Joe was boxed in. This is almost a game of tic-tac-toe. We're going to have to push it up into the next game. <laughs> Wow, now it's going to be up to Angry Horde Joe to retake the game in seven rounds. Can he do it? Not outside the realm of possibility, but will not be an easy task. Let's move on into our next game, and players switching positions, and we are going to move directly into this game, ladies and gentlemen. Playing on the top-hand side as the Red Crawlians, it will be Angry Horde Joe and his opponent playing on the bottom half side as the green and black Crawlians, it will be Needle. Well, let's get the game underway here. Needle making, once again, that point capture at the northern position. Another underling to make up the backup. And before Joe going for the obvious mirror. And now we're going to see Needle. We should expect to see the Garuda come out first. You know, instead the underling for the blocker. Now that underling is going to push up to that position quickly to force out the Garuda to protect the base. And now this Garuda is going to, this Garuda is going to be able to take another capture against it. Needle's going to dart back that other underling threatening a base capture in the back here. Angry Horde Joe forced to throw out underlings instead of swarmers. 
in order to protect the position here, and now Needle is free to go for more Garudas, and these Garudas are going to do very big damage against this Underling combination. And with that, the Underling Garuda combination is going to make a blow to that Underling on the base point up there, freeing it and making it very vulnerable. Out come the Garudas to try and retaliate against this Underling line. That will be an Underling kill on the mountain, and a kill count is actually evened up. But Needle in a very strong attack position. Can he get a kill on this 7 health Garuda in the back? Not going to be able to take a kill, but is going to be able to heavily damage the other two remaining Garudas. And down goes the kill for the Garuda. And with that Swarmer in the back and another Garuda to follow up from Needle. And now Angry Horde Joe in a position must make a kill this turn. And that Garuda, 5 health Garuda though, is separated from his attack ability and is not going to be able to contribute. And it looks like Needle is going to be able to keep his foot on the gas here. Another Garuda kill for Needle, putting himself at 800 over 100. And that is going to make it really difficult. And that one health is going to be able to retreat back to the healing tile, where it will immediately... And there's the GG again in seven rounds. Wow. Needle decisively taking this victory. And I actually really want to take a look at this round right here. What a great attack from Needle. Uh, actually, I, I, let's see. Let's analyze. We actually have to go back even further. This decision to push the underling up to the point keeps this Garuda on its on its toes, forces the underlings to come out here to defend the points. That's the problem now, because this underling can dart back here, put pressure here, puts pressure on this position, makes it difficult for this Garuda. If this Garuda leaves to go and attack this Garuda, this base is free. So this underling has to come up to protect it so that you can move the Garuda outwards and have the, the Underling protect the point. Then moving up into other rounds, once the position is cleared, you've got the double Garuda in the center top here. There is the, you now you're outnumbered in terms of raw Garudas in the back, but you do have the Swarm to back you up. Needle, instead of going, instead of trying to double up on the Garuda here and take a kill, Needle pushes his Garuda Pushes this Garuda to a 2 health where it can't do any return damage. Brings this Garuda out to the side and boxes out this Garuda from being able to contribute to the attack against the 7 health. So that when the 10 health goes for the 5 shot against it and this Garuda goes for... When the 10 health goes for a 5 shot against this Garuda, like this, this Garuda over here is not able to contribute and do the finishing. And then of course, this Swarmer able to move up to this position and take... The remaining kill. Great series by Needle. It looks like we have a champion, everyone. It is going to be our two August 2016 monthly tournament champion is Needle. Congratulations. Yet another tournament victory for this competitor. And we look to see him and win more in the future. Definitely keep your eye out. One of the highest rated players in the game for a very good reason. Excellent KVK series. Very, very fast final final series but sometimes that happens especially with kvk that's just the way it is i expect that when the new units are released kvk is going to be a completely different beast than just who can get to the aerials first it really will um that is what I, that's one of the things i'm looking forward to most i'm actually a crawlian player myself and I, I i had to take a break from crawlian because i kept getting matched up with these kvks and i, I couldn't do the air attacks anymore it just got too tedious Elcaster, I will be doing championship September. <laughs> ant does not eat bird. Bird eat ant. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us this evening. Please do not forget, hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy the content. Always appreciate the support. If you guys really, really enjoy the content, you want to help me make more of this content for you, uh, if you guys are interested, you can always hit the, there is the support my channel button down. It's a little dollar sign underneath my name. Uh, if you guys feel like throwing me a tip, I am always, I'm planning on doing a video for a fan, for a viewer appreciation in which I will be overviewing maps and casting games that from viewer requests. And if you would like, if you would like to guarantee your spot on that video to have something for the community to watch, um, I always, I, I put priority for anyone. If you, if you hit me with the support on the channel, I will prioritize you and make sure you get onto that video. And it also helps my channel out. So if you guys are interested, always love to help you always appreciate the help if not totally understand uh just coming up for later this season later this uh schedule on the roster guys i'm going to be continuing next week 
uh, with my Templar Battle Force Iron Man run. Those of you who, uh, <laughs> El Caster, exactly. Those of you who weren't able to watch it last time, we got, we had some fun talking about some of the character names. One of them was named Manlos. Watch Manlos, the manliest man ever, defeat a bunch of aliens in a squad tactical combat game. We had a lot of fun last time. Hope you guys come join us next time. Also, don't forget, we will be looking, uh, once the new units come out, I'm going to be hosting a, uh, Oh, just just some live matches like we've done in the past so that we all get an opportunity to try to mess around with some of the new units and see what they feel like see what they can do and have some more discussion about it and then later on this christmas guys i also have got a deal with uh giant goblin games they loved my username and i like their username both of us got goblin in it and uh they've asked me to do a stream for their christmas game the night that christmas ended it look it's a hilarious looking 2d shooter where you have a goblin that's killing christmas you get to kill things with reindeer poop uh so come and join me for that it should be a lot of fun to stream through all coming up this time on on we goblin games guys so thanks again for joining me this evening and uh until next time guys this is on we goblin signing off